Hello everyone. We are discussing questions on uh, simple harmonic motion. Write down a question. An object starts from positive amplitude. An object starts from positive amplitude. After what time? After what time? Speed of the object will be I'll make it after what times after what times in one complete oscillation its speed will be half of maximum object starts from positive amplitude for one complete oscillation now during that one complete oscillation time of capital T I'm asking you at what times speed will be half of maximum let's see if you can answer this you tell me first uh, when I say object starts from positive amplitude what is X as a function of time if an object starts from positive amplitude then what is X as a function of time answer this first good the first thing you need to realize is this that x will be given by a cos omega t if you start from this position then x is a sin omega t which was case 1 but if you start from this position what is this position x equals to 0 but if I say that at t equals to 0 x is a then this is case 2 and for case 2 x is a cos omega t it's like this you have an oscillator it is oscillating like this now somebody starts counting when it is at the mean position some other person starts his stopwatch when he finds that oscillator or pendulum or anything which is oscillating is at its amplitude so the person who starts his stopwatch when pendulum is at the mean position he is going to write x as a sin omega t but the other person who finds who starts observing the oscillation right from this point onwards he uses this equation so once you have x, what is v? Just remember this easy differentiation. Differentiation of cos is negative. A is the constant. Differentiation of cos is what? Sine. Since differentiation is with respect to t, 
this term of omega comes out. So this is velocity, negative sign. It will not always remain negative depending on the value of sign. Sign will take positive and negative values. So when sign becomes negative, 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 that will become what? Positive. And that's therefore I'm asking you, not about velocity, I'm asking you at what times. So you need to well find values of t. I'm not asking you how many times. I'm asking you at what times during one complete oscillation. One complete oscillation means this. Normally we draw like this. But if you start from this, as is given in the question, your oscillation completes when you are back at the same position. So for us, this is the path. Right here, time will be capital T. So starting from this position up to this, how many times you see speed becoming half? Try to visualize that and then answer what those times are. Let's see if you can complete the question now. Note down this much. Look here. Maximum speed is formed when object is at the mean position. V max is always at the mean position and is given by a omega. You can also see this in this function. V, forget about the negative sign, it is for direction. What is the maximum value of sign? 1. This gives us maximum as what? A omega. So object starts from this position. What is this position? Amplitude. At amplitude, everyone knows that V is what? 0. This is V0. This is the mean position. As it moves in this direction, somewhere here, speed will become what? Half of maximum. And then it increases up to this point. After this, speed decreases. Again, somewhere here, speed will be half of maximum. It reaches this point, the other amplitude, speed becomes zero, then goes back, when passes through the same position, speed again becomes what? Half of maximum. It increases, becomes maximum at the main position, and then decreases when you pass the same point. Position-wise, this and this, they are same. Again, speed becomes what? Half of maximum. So how many positions are there where your speed is half of maximum? One, two, three, four. So we'll get four values of time. How do we find these four values? Look here. V is half of maximum. You're starting from this point. Let's say this point is A. This is B, this is C, and this is D. Position-wise, B and C are same. Position-wise, A and D are same. It's like this. It's a linear oscillation. This is mean position. This is point A as well as D. A, when you are moving that way. D, when you are moving this way or change the direction, whatever it is. A means you're moving this way. D means you're moving that way. Similarly, this point is B as well as C. So at B, object is traveling in this direction. It comes back, reaches same position. 
But since direction is different, we have shown it differently as C. These are the four times where speed is half. So let's answer this position A. This is the value of V. What is V? A omega by 2. But remember what? Minus. We're finding time from this position to this position. At A, object is traveling in this direction. And therefore a negative sign. Minus of A omega sin omega t. Negative, negative cancelled. Sin omega t is coming 1 by 2. Everybody knows that omega t will be 30. But write down in terms of radians which is pi by 6. What is omega? 2 pi upon capital T multiplied by T. So what is T coming? T for A. For A is coming capital T divided by 12. So this is the first time when speed becomes what? Half of maximum. With the help of this, you can easily find these times. Note down this much and try to answer other values of t. Look here, how you can find all these times now. This is the path. This is the mean position. This is your T0 moment. Point A. From this position to this position, we have found that time is T by 12. T by 12. We are interested in finding time for point B. This is point B. Now, look here. From amplitude to this position, from amplitude to this position, this much time will also be t by 12. If this object is oscillating from this position to this, or from this position to this, or from on the other side, this position to the amplitude, from amplitude to this, time will be same. What I am saying is this. This point is what? C. From amplitude to this, time will be T by 12. This is your D. This much time is also T by 12. This T by 12 it tells us that from amplitude where V is 0, if you arrive at a point where speed becomes half of maximum, then time taken is T by 12. Exactly same time will be taken when you are going back from D for the amplitude position. Right here, you arrive from amplitude to this point. This is the same thing, B to the other amplitude amplitude to C. If I remember this T by 12 or if I have already found the value of T by 12, how easy it is to answer something like this. What is time from one amplitude to the other amplitude? From this amplitude to this amplitude, this amplitude to this amplitude, half of the oscillation, half of the oscillation. This is the other half. So this much time is what? T by 2. But I need time to reach B from this up to this point. From this 
up to this point it's t by 2 so from this to this it will be what t by 2 minus t by 12 which is 5 t by 12 If you have understood 5t by 12, then write down yes in the comment box and using same approach, get me time for C and time for D. Go down this much. So let's find out time for C. What is time for C? Time for C is what? This much, how much? T by 2. And after T by 2, what? Additional T by 12. T by 2 plus T by 12. T by 2 and T by 12, which gives us 7 T by 12. So we have found only t by 12 and with the help of t by 12 we are easily calculating all other times. The last thing left is what td. What is td? t by 2 plus t by 2. One oscillation is complete. Capital T. Capital T. But you are at d. Your t by 12. You need to subtract t by 12. This much is capital T. You have completed one oscillation. But according to the question, since you are at point D, you are T by 12 before. So it will be T minus T by 12, which is coming 11 T by 12. So that's how you can easily find all the times. Put on this much. We can also use circular motion interpretation. In circular motion interpretation of simple harmonic motion, for the given question, rod is right here at this position. Object starts from the positive amplitude. Remember, light is coming from this side. and shadow on the screen over here. Now, we have found first value and the first value is coming this omega t. This much is 30 degrees. And we solve the equation, we found that omega t is coming what 30. So this is that position 30 degrees. So right here, object, this rod is moving in this direction, and shadow, which corresponds to A, is coming down with what A omega by 2. This is your 30 degrees part. Now, since the whole setup is symmetrical, next time it will happen when this angle is 30. Next time it will happen when this angle is 30. And the last is this. 30. So this is A, this is B, this is C, and this is D. That's what all these times are. Now, what is time from this point to this point? 
P by 12. To cover 30 degrees, how long it takes? T by 12. Can you see that this much is 150? 5 times. So to cover this 30, it takes T by 12. To cover 5 times as much angle, it will take what? 5T by 12. The time to reach B was 5T by 12. I have erased that thing, but you know that time to reach B was what? 5T by 12. Similarly, what is C? C is, you can see, 180 plus 30. Starting from this position, if you count the total angle, it's 180 plus 30, which is 210. So for C, the angle is coming, what? 210, which is 7 times. 7 times means time for C is 70 by 12. This is your 70 by 12. For 30, T by 12. For 210, 70 by 12. What is this? 330, which is what? 11 times. And therefore, time becomes what? 11 T by 12. Starting from this, if you arrive at this position, what is the angle? 330 degrees, which is 11 times 30. And therefore, 11 times T by 12. Do you understand? Are you comfortable with this part? Tell me fast. All these angles and these values. Good. <coughs> Put on this question. You need to find the uh, values of time. When kinetic energy and potential energy, they both are same. Object starts from, you can say at T0, X is 0. At T0, X is 0. That means object starts from mean position. That means we are talking about case 1. So for case 1, during one complete oscillation, at what times K and P both will be equal? Let's see if we can answer this. And remember, you just need to find one value of time and then with the help of that, you can find other three values. Let me repeat my question. We are discussing case one. Object starts from mean position. At what times K kinetic energy will be equal to its potential energy? Let me give you some hint. When an object is oscillating, It's like this. Block is connected to a spring of force constant K. In this case, potential energy is what? It's not MGH. What is potential energy? Half K X square. So this thing is nothing but you push this block, release it and it starts oscillating. During these oscillations, mechanical energy, what is mechanical energy? Sum of K and P, this always remains what? Constant. 
which is nothing but C O M E. <coughs> so, if I say that sum of K and P is a constant, then it basically tells you what the moment K E is P E. This is nothing but K E max divided by two, or P E max divided by two. Let me ask you this thing first. Are you comfortable with this? Take your time. And if you think that you have got this point, when k is equal to p, basically it is half of k max, half of p max. Once you become comfortable with this, then write down yes in the comment box. And this is a hint for you. Look here. This is the natural length. And it is oscillating about this point, and we have already seen this type of thing in the chapter of work, power, energy. At natural length, spring potential energy is zero. This natural length is nothing but mean position. Right at this point. Kinetic energy will be max. Let's say hundred. So when this block oscillates, it arrives at the natural length or the mean position. Speed is maximum, therefore k is maximum. Spring potential energy being at the natural length becomes automatically what zero. So what is total energy? Total energy is coming what hundred. When this object will be at maximum elongation, maximum elongation means x equals to a. Right at this point, it stops. If it stops, that means at this point k becomes zero. So what about p? Spring potential energy. Total energy is always conserved. If this is zero, then spring potential energy should become what? Hundred. This hundred is the maximum of spring potential energy. This hundred is maximum of k. Now, at any time when they both are equal, k and p, they can only be what? It can only be what? Fifty plus fifty. Equals to hundred. So once you say that k and p, the sum is hundred, and k and p both are same. K and p can only take these values, k max and p max. Now, since object starts from mean position, right away you know that x is what a. Sine omega t. Potential energy you're saying is half of maximum, which means what? What is p? You're saying this p is half of p max. What is p? Half k x square. What is p max half k? What is p max when you are at the amplitude? What is p max half k a square? Just when you write this, you. I have almost solved this question.
you can see that x is coming a by root 2. You can always take plus minus and you know plus means on the right side, minus means on the left side. So your x is coming what a by root 2. This is in itself, this thing is a question. You can always ask at what x, p, and k are same. This is that x. Now, our question says at what times x is plus minus a by root 2. So this is x. Put this value of x in this, find one time, and then use the integrate and find other times. So the information was not given directly. I could have given you that at what times x will be a by root 2. But instead I'm asking you when k is p, how many time instants, time stamps are there when it happens. So start from this. Now put this value in that, find the first time and then accordingly other values of time. Look here. X is a sin omega t and we have found that x is a by root 2. What is omega t coming? 45 degrees. a cancel, one is sine 1 by root 2, when angle is what? 45. What is 45? Pi by 4. If this is pi by 4. What is omega? 2 pi upon t into t. So what is t coming? t by 8. So this is the first time when k will be equal to what? p. Now get me other values of time. Uh, other three values of time. Find those other three values. Good. Some of you answered correctly. Look at the first method. Object starts from mean position. When they say that object starts from mean position, this is the rod initially. This is t equals to zero. So when the first time you found that k is p, this angle is what? 45. Remember, light is coming from this side and we are interested in the shadow which it casts on the screen. The next time, it will be over here. This should also be 45. Next time, same thing happens when this is 45. Next time this thing happens when this angle is what? 45. We already found time for this which is t by 8. You need to find time for this, this, this. Just figure out, just figure out how much is this. in terms of 45 and you can answer this question. Use this trick and answer the whole thing. So what is this angle by? Angle wise this is uh, 135 starting from this, this much, this much is 135. What is 135? 135 is 3 into 45. For 45 degrees, time is what? T by 8 and therefore time to reach this point is 3T by 8. 
डन थ्री टी बाय एट दिस इज वन एट्टी प्लस फोर्टी फाइव टू ट्वेंटी फाइव What is two twenty five? Two twenty five is five into forty five. Five into forty five means five into t by twelve. What is this? Either multiply or I'm giving you the other version. What is time to complete one oscillation t? But you are forty-five degrees before you are at this point. For forty-five degrees, what is the time? T minus T by eight. So what is the time coming? Seven T by eight. Or for this position, your angle is three sixty minus forty-five, which is three hundred and fifteen. Which is seven times forty-five degrees, and therefore time is seventy by eight. I hope everything is clear. Put on this. Now <clears throat> let's try a new profile. On an object, two simple harmonic motions are superimposed. These are the two simple harmonic motions. When I say on a given object, we are superimposing two SHMs, it means what? For x-axis part. This. This equation is given by a sine omega t. Then, forget about this. If somebody is looking along the y-axis, then, or if I only give oscillations along the y-axis, then equation is given by y equals to b cos omega t. A sine. B cos, but if both these commands are given simultaneously, then write down equation of the path or trajectory. So if two SHMs. One along the x-axis, one along the y-axis are superimposed on a single oscillator, on a single oscillating body. Then what will be its path? What will be equation of trajectory? Let's see if you can answer the question without my help, and then I will give you few hints. Try to answer this thing. We're taking too long. Take the hint. The hint is when I say equation of trajectory, it means what? Equation of trajectory means relationship between x and y coordinates. Relationship between x and y coordinates. That means you need to eliminate t. Try to eliminate t from these equations. Establish a relation between x and y. That is nothing but equation of trajectory. It's a question which you can answer in just ten seconds. <clears throat> Look, when I say you need to eliminate t, I'm asking you this: What is sine omega t? X upon a. What is sine omega t? What is cos omega t? 
cos omega t is coming y upon b now how do i get rid of the term of t simple do this sin square omega t plus cos square omega t which is x square upon a square plus y square upon b square 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 but what is sin square theta plus cos square theta this is always one what is this we have seen this type of thing in gravitation an ellipse this is the equation of an ellipse that means trajectory is what elliptical do you understand this profile this technique this method yes or no look what all happened in this uh, example let's visualize this thing so once you say it is an ellipse that's how you draw an ellipse that's your ellipse this length is a along the x axis this length is b along the y axis now i will place two screens if i send light from this side or if i send light from this side then i hope you can visualize a screen placed over here as one a screen placed over here as two on these screens if you look at the shadow then profile of that shadow is given by these equations what is happening look you have a rod this rod is something whose length <coughs> changes but it changes such that tip always lies on this ellipse just for your visualization if you can understand these things <coughs> you can answer so many similar profiles and will also increase your understanding of simple harmonic motion nothing difficult there is a rod and it moves such that tip always lies on this ellipse it starts from this position it starts from this position what do i say this position it will be clear in just a few seconds this is t0 no and this is some other time t so when rod is over here and you throw light from this side where will be the shadow at this place throw light from this side this is the shadow what is the x position zero now as the rod moves 
in this direction as it rotates this shadow is going to move in this direction look it is going to move in this direction when it becomes horizontal what is the length of the rod it becomes a remember tip should always lie on the ellipse so when it is over here you get what a shadow of maximum length so right here your x becomes what a beginning t0 when it becomes this shadow is over here this thing gives us what x equals to a sin omega t so what you are seeing on screen 2 is x equals to a sin omega t part of this rod now let's discuss s2 sec s1 the first screen when rod is over here light is coming from this side if light is coming from this side you find that shadow is at this position this is the rod what is the length of the rod b right at this place length of the rod is what b light is coming from this side the shadow it casts on the screen lies here this is what for this screen this is the amplitude position why do i say amplitude position look here as the rod rotates this shadow is coming down shadow is coming down so your object is starting from the amplitude and if an object starts from amplitude we use what cos and what is the amplitude this time b oscillations are along the y axis and therefore we are using what y so this equation is s1 for first screen rod is over here when rod is at this point when rod is at this point due to this light on the screen shadow is at the amplitude look carefully for this setup shadow is at the amplitude but for this setup shadow is at the mean position given by y equals to 0 when rod is in this portion and arrives over here again shadow is at this point for this shadow is at the negative amplitude so that's why when you give these commands you get what an equation like this x square upon a square plus y square upon b square equals to 1 now let's relate this thing with circular motion interpretation when i have taught you circular motion interpretation i gave you a equals to b type of setup if a and b both are same then this equation becomes what x square plus y square equals to what a square if they both are equal which is the equation of a circle if both a and b are same then this ellipse becomes what a circle and when you have circular motion and we are discussing shadow part that was what that was nothing but a sin omega t so this is a generalized version of circular motion interpretation of symbol harmonic motion tell me are you comfortable with this profile this explanation shadow shadow yes or no let's see if you can answer this get me equation of trajectory if x is given by a sin omega t 
and y is given by b b sin 2 omega t x is a sin omega t and y is b sin 2 omega t get me equation or trajectory that means relationship between x and y coordinates answer this well no response but look how easy the question is what is sin 2 theta what is sin 2 theta this is 2 sin theta cos theta this is 2 sin omega t cos omega t this is 2 theta which becomes 2 sin theta cos theta so your y is coming what b 2 what is sin omega t there x upon a x upon a multiplied by what cos omega t but I hope you won't mind if I solve the question directly this is cos omega t let's save time this is 2b sin omega t into cos what is cos theta root over 1 minus sin square omega t what is cos root over 1 minus sin square put it here 1 minus sin which is x upon a x square upon a square if you wish you can square both sides and you get what y square equals to 4 b square upon a square x inside x square square of x multiplied by 1 minus square of x multiplied by this x to the power 4 upon a square so if somebody tries to superimpose two SHMs look both SHMs start from mean position but there is a basic difference what is angular frequency of the first one omega what is the angular frequency of the second one 2 omega so along the x-axis, if you are looking at the shadow along the x, then it is going to oscillate like this. Along the y-axis, if you observe it, then it's faster. Double the speed. Double the speed of oscillation because this is what is 2 omega. And when you superimpose both these commands, you get this equation. So they will ask you these type of things. This one is definitely for competitive examinations. Oh, nothing special it's about sign cause these things so I'm giving you a homework take this homework X is a sine omega t and y is B cos 2 omega t for this find out equation of trajectory Roll down this much and then you can leave thank you very much